right guys welcome back to another m creator lore video so today what we're going to be covering is basically updating the blocks in the kiln so we have currently the kiln block which uh consists of like 90 percent of the kiln itself but uh, we made all these new textures so we're going to go ahead and copy the block from the kiln block that we had and then we're going to start adding the uh, corners and such for the kiln. So there's the corners. We need um, basically the uh, panel parts, the, the parts that are like on two sides. And I think that's about all that I needed actually, but we needed the top, middle, and bottom for both of those. So basically what I needed to do was set up all the... Um, textures and I, I just kept the, the name the same because it's all part of the same block so it's not um or same system so it didn't really need a unique names for all of them so I was basically just working on the corners parts first and then I can move on to um getting the what do you call it the uh the straight parts the walls uh created but uh, there was like the top, bottom, and center for these ones that I needed to do. And then I think around this time, I realized that there was um, the part that was on the top that I still needed to do. So I had to adjust the rotation on all the textures uh, for the panels and stuff. So I was trying to find where the texture was that I needed for that and I selected the corner and then I realized that the textures were on the wrong side so basically I needed to shift all the the northeast southwest ones over to the right by one so that's basically what I was doing I was just setting up the textures there and then I had to do that with these ones as well because they would look a little bit off if they weren't. <laughs> so uh, I was fixing that up and I just left the default uh, corners at the moment for um, those original cube or the tile ones just because I didn't know what to do with them at the moment. But um, I think I might have updated them after I was finished with recording. So... Um, outside of that, uh, the next thing that I needed to work on was, I think these were the, can't really read that <laughs> in the editor, uh, we'll find out really soon. So I think it was the end pieces. I didn't actually use these pieces at all. Um, basically what, um, I ended up doing was I ended up just, um, using the regular corners and the, um, the walls for the parts that I needed the the ends for and it looks just fine so I didn't really need the end pieces but I ended up making them beforehand so just in case I needed them and they're, they're all the same properties as the the blocks themselves so the original blocks but um, I needed to figure out uh, some other things like what to basically have here I, I wasn't really sure exactly what I needed for um, the texture and I would have needed a new texture and stuff like that for the the wall part and I couldn't really figure out exactly what to do with it so I just ended up applying the um, the, the full bricks because it was in the right rotation and stuff but uh, now basically what I'm working on is the wall part so uh, this one is, uh, I believe, the, was this the bottom or top? I think this might have been, yeah, this might have been the, the bottom one. So basically what I was working on was the bottom. I know that I updated the, the side textures for this one. Uh, basically what I ended up doing was just going with a bottom border all the way around and... Uh, that was that allowed me to do the corner pieces. I did that with the corners as well uh, for the um, the corner ones uh, to make sure that the textures were all around in the end. And then I was working on the top ones, and I needed the top texture. And then I could start working on the mechanics for all these. Now I was th I was thinking originally to go ahead and um, 
make the block uh, update uh, based on the thing. And then I realized that it was going to take too much time to do that. So I was going over the procedures and I decided to go ahead and update the script for when it was built. So uh, it would have required a lot more time to do it. And that's kind of partly why the video is so long because I had to uh, play around with all the settings and stuff like that. But in the end, uh, I ended up, um, you know, messing around with a lot of the uh, thing, trying to get an idea of what I needed. And I'm just like, uh, okay, so we might as well just go with the, the block because that's where it was leading to at the end as well. So I would have had to test if the block was a certain thing and all this other stuff. And I just decided it was probably better to go with the... Um, the actual um, building script and just break it up into smaller parts to improve the performance for the procedure. So that's basically what I did in the end. But um, yeah, this this didn't really, this was just like irrelevant. I was working on, I was trying to figure out at this point how to go have, go about adding all the different types of blocks and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't think this is feasible actually, like to actually do it this method. And I was going to do it through the update tick, but it's just, it would have been too much uh, conditions, testing for all the rotations and all this other stuff. And at that point, I, I, I believe I balanced out the the amount of time that it would have taken me and I decided just to update the uh, build script as it would probably be more effective to um, for time management and stuff so that's basically I was looking over the build script and I'm like okay maybe um, we can go ahead and do something so I, I can't remember what I did here oh yeah that's right I needed the foundation block I almost forgot to about adding the foundation block so I was basically setting that up quickly and then we could start working on the build script and I ended up just um, going over the script it took me a couple minutes to figure out what I needed to do because there's so many components to this um, this uh, furnace that I was like okay and just spoiler alert it did take me a couple attempts to actually do. Um, I had like three or four uh, times that I went in game to test and I got it completely wrong. You'll be able to see the uh, disaster of all that at the end of the video. But um, yeah, so basically I was just starting to work on this part. I was looking at, okay, how do I had it set up? And then I started working on moving things over to the other side there so when I went ahead and started making changes to these particular files like those ones there um, are I think for the walls or something like that I can't remember which ones are for the walls but a lot of those were for the walls and stuff and I didn't really need those and I just started working on trying to get a few different things set up so I needed a way to test for the level of the actual um oh, what was it the the height that it was on and i know that i needed to go about going the height of the actual furnace for the walls and stuff so i basically created a new variable called uh i think it was count or something like that which was going to help me determine how high the position was uh for the uh, script so basically it would go from bottom to top and then it would do the next coordinate and next coordinate and next coordinate for all the corners walls and stuff and this would allow me to um, set different levels for the uh, blocks that I wanted to place so basically uh, for example I'm putting a range in here uh, between anything greater than one and less than four uh, what that will allow me to do is place those two middle blocks uh, that without needing to make each individual line for it. So basically that's what I was doing. I was just setting up those and then I needed to update the blocks. So I was setting the blocks for the corners. And the only other thing that I needed to worry about was the rotation 
Again, I had to set up the blocks. But the rotation was the only other thing that I needed to sort out. So I was basically just set rotation. And that's kind of where most of the testing actually <laughs> messed up was the uh, placement and the rotation of the block. So that's basically the script that I worked on. Um, there was a few changes that I ended up doing. I had to figure out the coordinates because the coordinates were a little bit... Um, different at this point so now I'm not basically doing a huge wall of them I'm doing uh, individual sections so I needed uh, to figure out and mathematic wise for the corner locations what the coordinates for those would be and then I had to update those for that so basically I was just creating another one I think uh, there was some issues with the coordinates for some of the stuff but um, yeah, this is this part was pretty much me just trying to figure out what on earth I needed to do for the coordinates. And I just started working on the next one. I figured I would troubleshoot later on in game and I would be able to get that all set up. So this one that I'm working on is for the walls. And I think it's for the walls. I'm pretty sure it is. So basically what I needed to do with the repeater is increase the time and I needed to reset the count uh, variable and I needed to also update the the coordinates so this is basically what I was end up doing was uh, resetting the variable for y uh, setting the count to 1 and um, increasing the coordinate for the wall by whatever, I think one as well, each time that the repeater runs. So and one of the other problems that I remember having was the repeater numbers were reversed. So uh, there was four on the, uh, I think there was on the Z side and it should have been four on the height, not the Z side. So um, I had to go back and it took me a while to figure out what was going on there because there was some really interesting stuff happening in game that wasn't, really making any sense to me at the time but um, I did get it sorted out and uh, that part was all secure so the next thing that I needed to work on was the other wall parts and this is basically where I was working on uh, I think at this point I don't know if this is where I merged the uh, rotation block in uh, with the um, actual block being placed but I might have done that um, or maybe later on I can't remember uh, but basically what I ended up doing was I, I put the rotation block inside each of the uh, thing right under the block being placed and then that way it was able to uh, go ahead and um, be only rotated if that block was placed so that was kind of a last minute thought I think uh, towards the end um, one of my testing periods I ended up doing that so I was just trying to figure out um, again what the other rotations and stuff were I was having a really hard time trying to visualize it I, I did make some notes on some um, index cards and I couldn't even figure it out for that based on that because there's so many parts to it I have the corners the walls I had to make sure that the furnace wasn't going to be replaced there was um, the ladders that had to be pasted after so there was like tons of different components that needed to be implemented as well as the foundation so um, overall um, it did take me like like I said a few attempts to actually do um, one of the things that I needed to do was uh, fix the placement and that just came down to some, I think it was wrong variables, like some of the variables were not linked up properly. But um, another thing that I ended up working on was breaking it up into sections. So because at this point around this time when I'm adding all these variables and stuff, the block count got pretty high. So I ended up just breaking it up into a new procedure and then I was able to, um, you know, handle the corners for one of them, the walls for the other, the foundation, the um, 
I think there was ladders and something else. I think setting all the block uh, group IDs. So that had to be done in its own little procedure as well. And that basically just allowed me to call all the things up into this procedure itself. So it would allow me to do all that. Uh, yeah, at this point, I think I started getting confused because I was working on so many different parts and um, it was one of the contributing factors to me having to break it up into a whole bunch of other things. But I noticed it started to lag a little bit when I was moving things around. So I, I knew that I needed to break it up pretty soon. And I was just trying to figure out all the coordinates and stuff. It's just like, there was tons of stuff. And I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, what part is actually the... Uh, part that I needed. So this is when I started breaking it up into the procedures themselves. So I basically just imported the ones that I needed. So this one is for the, uh, I believe, clearing the area. And then I needed to paste in the code that I had in the previous uh, thing with the um, foundation. So this one covers the foundation. And then I needed the one for the corners. So that consists of all these ones. So there's like four different parts here. And you can see how easier it is to manage all these as well now. So that's why I broke it up. And then there was the walls. So basically I added the walls. There's four walls as well. And you might notice that there's no group uh, variable in these. Uh, you don't really need the group variable. And then there was the uh, ladders. So this was only one procedure, I think, like one coordinate thing, but there was a few different parts for it. And then lastly, there was the um, the group uh, setting. So I had to basically replace the group uh, for all the blocks, assign the group to it. So that's basically what this one does. It's just a simple repeater for the area, assigns the group to it within a range. And then after that, I could just basically call all the um, procedures in the order I needed um, to basically run the test and stuff like that. So um, if there was an issue with a wall or something like that, this actually saved a lot of time because then I could go ahead and not worry about trying to find it in this particular procedure. I could go to the unique procedure that it was assigned for. Now there was still the script for removing the block itself, uh, the blocks in the area, uh, or basically testing for the blocks. I think this wasn't the removing, this was the testing. And that would allow me to basically run the script that I needed uh, either to place this furnace or the um, remove the block itself. So for the furnace itself. And then I needed to remove the main block that we were using. And then I basically needed to assign all the blocks for the that we added in today's video. So all these ones. And then I just started organizing it a little bit uh, just so it was a little bit tidier. I think I didn't do all of it, but um, basically all these different parts I needed to move around. And I, I did eventually move the um, rotation part into the individual script, but I don't think I might have covered that on camera. So, um, And then there's all these different ones, so um, all the different procedures. But you can see how many blocks there are in the script, right? So uh, that's probably why it was lagging quite a bit. So in game uh there was some issues so like i said uh there was the first attempt which um went pretty poorly and there's some scattered parts of furnaces around here because the coordinates were all off so it was placing them in the trees and stuff and then my second attempt was a little bit better uh it was missing some walls though so like some wall parts and i couldn't figure that out and the rotations were still off uh, third attempt, there was only a couple rotations off, but uh, mostly on the east and west side for the corners, and a wall missing. And then finally, my final attempt was this one, which actually works uh, perfectly fine. So it's a lot nicer for the design and stuff like that. The texture looks good. Uh, the furnace still needs to be updated. I did update the furnace texture. Um, I might have done it off camera. I can't remember. Just the sides. Uh, I still want to do redo the texture for the front of the furnace just so it matches up with the seams for the wall part. 
but um, we can do that in a future video. Uh, I want to start working on a couple extra mechanics suggested uh, by Carrie. Um, basically a um, temperature system for the, the kiln. And I figure what we'll end up doing is we'll um, create support for that in the um, config file for the actual recipes. Uh, so it can be supported by any particular uh, mod. They can adjust the temperature that they need for the kiln at any point. So it'll be recipe based. Uh, the only thing is I need to figure out how I'm going to be ba basically updating it for that. I need a maximum kiln temperature and all that other stuff. So there's some extra mechanics that we'll need to figure out. But uh, yeah, it looks good. I'm really impressed with the textures and stuff, how they turned out. The only few different things is the corners of the um, seams where that like right where the ladder is, those things need to be updated. But that's uh, for another video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.